Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus again today. This is episode three of three in our series on holograms. If you haven't listened to the other episodes in this series, you should go back and listen to those. Also make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes in all of our series. You can also find the full episode, all of the three of them smushed together on SoundCloud, iTunes, you name it. But today we're gonna talk about how our universe might not be what we think. This has to do with holograms, trust me, and what holograms have taught us about our universe. So let's kick into it. So we all saw The Matrix, right? If you didn't, go back and watch it. It's totally worth it. It's almost 20 years old, but it's still really, really good. The question that the movie poses, are we living in a simulation? That's a real question. Do we live in one, and how would we know? Scientists are working on that now. Putting it another way, you and I, we're we're 3D, right? Time, that would be the fourth dimension, 4D. But like a hologram, what if? the fabric of space-time existed on something else. The little eagle on your credit card, it's printed onto something. What if the universe is printed onto something too? It might seem silly to even ask, but there are a lot of papers in the world of physics on this, the world of astronomy on this, way more than one. It's called the holographic principle. And the reason we have it is because of quantum gravity, black holes, and string theory. And I can't explain all three of those things right now, but suffice it to say, they're very important to this theory. Science American writer and science journalist J.R. Minkle puts it like this. Once you go into a black hole, everything you are is destroyed. And the black hole gets a little bit larger, right? It makes sense. You get sucked into the black hole, or really you fall into the black hole, you spaghettify, you get smushed into the middle, and the black hole gets bigger. Makes sense. The thing is, that actually defies the second law of thermodynamics. Because over time, the universe is supposed to become more disordered, more chaotic, more entropic. If I remove all of the complications of you, or of a planet, or a star, and turn it into a very simple black hole, I've made the universe less entropic, which is against the second law of thermodynamics. So with this, we can use holograms to explain why it's important. So, astronomers and physicists and smarter people than me think, the black holes might not be destroying the information. They're just encoding it, just like a hologram. So how does this affect you and me? One, we're not in a black hole. I mean, I don't think we are. I wouldn't even know how to know. This is exactly what we were saying earlier, though. If information in a black hole is encoded in two dimensions, then what if it was just two-dimensional already? If true, the 3D universe, all of the information around us, could be encoded into 2D, and we're just used to seeing it that way. We're used to looking at the universe and seeing a hologram, and it's really two-dimensional. We just think it's 3D, like a 3D film projected onto the fabric of the universe or onto the screen at the movie theater, right? If we've only ever seen that, how would we know the difference? No one's saying it's not real, by the way. It's real to us but we're sort of like last action heroing it over here, right? Is that, that's too obscure. We're like space jamming it over here. Bugs Bunny, he thought it was real in his universe and Michael Jordan's universe was just as real. We're not saying that the cartoon isn't real to the person living in the cartoon. Gabor's invention of the hologram inspired scientists to use math to try and figure out if we do live inside of a hologram. It'd be like the cartoon characters trying to understand how ink and paper work right? And math is helping us understand that it might be true. And if we are really a projection, to find out, to see exactly how, we just need to get closer to the screen. But the pixels that make up the image of the universe on the screen, they could be detectable. Some scientists designed an experiment called the holometer to try and spot the pixels in our real universe. Lasers reflect through some mirrors to a detector, and they're looking for the jitter of space itself. The thing is, if these pixels exist, they are 10 trillion trillion times smaller than an atom. They're at what's called the Planck scale. And they started the experiment in 2013, and in 2017, they got a result. And I'll tell you more about it when we come back. Seeker Plus is supported by another podcast you might enjoy, IRL by Mozilla. It used to be that what happened on the internet 
stayed on the internet, right? But these days, online life is real life. On IRL, host Veronica Belmont shares real stories of life online and real talk about the ups and downs of having technology all around us. From fake news to facial recognition, online dating, data privacy, IRL questions our relationship to technology and helps you make sense of the way technology is changing your life. IRL is produced by the nonprofit Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox. Mozilla puts people over profit and takes your relationship with technology and your online safety seriously. IRL is an entertaining look at the good, the bad, the trends, and the impacts of the new modern world on us as humans. And if you're looking for another great podcast to add to your list, which hopefully you are, check out IRL. Subscribe to IRL on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so where were we? Uh, Holography of our universe and ourselves and also your mom. That's true. So, in 2017, they got their result, and we are all living in a hologram. You're welcome. No, you don't have to panic. It's fine. It's totally fine. We're also not living in a hologram. It depends on who you ask. Scientists are still debating it. It's, it's a big deal. This whole universe hologram discussion is mainly in the realm of mathematics at the moment. It's a way of seeing the universe. Remember, again, that holograms encode information that's more complex than the thing that they are printed on, right? So if we could somehow get to the edge of the universe, then the screen it would be projected on would be right there in front of us. And mathematically, that screen is simpler than the universe itself that it's containing. That makes the math that explains quantum gravity, black holes, and string theory, which I don't have time to explain right now, but they're integral to the hologram principle, easier to explain. It's easier to explain quantum gravity, black holes, and string theory if the holographic principle is true. It requires less math, and the math actually works. We don't see the hologram, but math makes us treat the universe as if there is one. Let me editorialize here before we wrap up and explain why a holographic universe might matter. Isaac Newton realized that gravity was a thing. He used math to explain planetary motion, stars, but it wasn't precise enough to explain the more edgy things like black holes. So then Einstein shows up and realizes space-time was a thing and used math to better explain black holes, also planetary motion, and stars, giant things. He wasn't precise enough, though, to explain everything, like the really small stuff, like quantum mechanics. So someday, someone, maybe you, will figure out how to use math to explain quantum mechanics and the tiny things and how they work with the giant things and the planetary motion and wrap this whole thing up into a nice little bow. Humans are just adding decimal places, adding precision to the ends of their equations. They're getting better at explaining everything. And this theory popped into a scientist's head in the 1990s because a guy in the 19th century wanted to take a better picture with color of fruit baskets and trees. Science is the best. I love that. Holograms capture our imagination. They are the ultimate trick because they capture more than their sum, more than what they are. They do contain multitudes. And that's where I'm going to end. I'm going to do that. Go ahead and put that on your wall. Thanks for tuning in. For more Seeker videos, make sure you subscribe. We release new videos all the time. You can also check out the other videos on this channel while you wait for the next series. They're all great. You can also come find me out there on the internet. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Until then, we'll see you next time.